Joshua, thank you for joining us. As we continue to track COVID-19, what is the one thing that's worrying you right now? It, the lockdowns are being eased. We're seeing protests. You worry about the, you know, the, the congregation of a lot of people together about some of the police tactics. I have been worried about some of the police tactics and how, if, particularly if they're arresting a lot of peaceful protesters and putting them inside together in jails. We know that that is a location where the virus has spread quite a lot. Um, more generally, I think that um, there's a little bit of a sense, and I'm just saying generally that, okay, we're now moving past coronavirus, but we can't move past coronavirus because the virus is still there and still has the same logic that it always had. So whether we're, you know, um, protesting, which I think people are protesting the right things, you know, it's incredibly important, or whether we're, you know, doing other things, whatever it is, um, you know, we have to have the coronavirus in mind to keep it as safe as possible. Uh, what about schools? Is the reopening of schools uh, something that needs to be done more uh, quickly than we have so far or less quickly? Well, we have the fall coming up in the United States when school would normally open. Kids have really suffered not being in school. Uh, it's very important that kids not only get, you know, education, but uh, breakfast and lunch that comes with school, the supportive teachers, the social interaction with friends. All that's extremely important. I think it should be much more of a national priority to get ready for school. But school will look a little different this fall. You know, still have to keep the coronavirus in mind. And so there are uh, ways to reduce the risk, like keeping small groups of kids together all day, spacing out the desks a little bit more, extra cleaning. But, you know, we've really got to get on that now for us to be ready in the fall. Why have we had such a different response from a lot of European economies reopening some of the schools? I'm thinking of France, I'm thinking of the UK compared to the US. Well, most schools won't reopen until September. You know, I, I think that um, typically in the United States we don't have school over the summer, so I think, it's, I think people are going to take the summer to prepare for the fall. Um, the kids are going to lose more ground over the summer, unfortunately. Um, I can't tell you why, you know, what exactly is happening in, in other countries based on what their school schedules are. Um, I think they're starting relatively slowly in most countries, um, and they're going to have some experience that hopefully we can learn from here. Uh, what is the, the one thing that you would learn looking back at what's happened over the last two to three months? Well, I think that we really come to appreciate how important this asymptomatic spread is before people get symptoms um, that they can really spread the virus on. And um, that has led to, you know, big shifts in our understanding of how to respond. Um, that's been, you know, hard-won knowledge in a way because a lot of people have gotten sick, particularly in nursing homes. Um, but I think it, it really tells us that there's a certain scenario we really want to avoid particularly, you know, large groups of people indoors, people who are vulnerable. We need to figure out ways to use equipment, reduce events, do, do um, you know, other things to stay apart from each other that really prevents that kind of spread from happening. How much do we understand about the virus? I know we understand more than what we did even three, four weeks ago, but c can it morph? Can this virus become something else come next winter? I don't think it's going to morph that much, but I think you can have all kinds of um, dangers with respiratory season and flu happening at the same time. We really don't understand a lot about what the virus does to the body. Um, there's a lot of evidence pouring out about just the impact on so many different systems. A story today about the brain, their blood vessel issues, their blood clot issues. It's a very um, you know, difficult and serious illness um, for a lot of people. And I think um, that's made it hard. On the other hand, we are learning some more about treatment. And I've been heartened to see some of the studies come out about convalescent serum, the use of antibodies, um, that uh, you know, if it's too late, it doesn't work. But earlier in the disease, it appears from several studies that there are real signals of benefit. And there's some bigger studies happening. And that could provide a really, really important um, way to help people uh, before they get really sick. I, mean, I know there are various reports or various thinking on why it affects people so differently. When will we have a, a better understanding of who's most at risk? I think it's going to be a gradual better understanding. I don't think it'll be a particular day because there are all kinds of different angles to look at. Is it, 
you know, does it relate to people's blood type? Maybe. I mean, there's some signal there that type A has a, has a harder time with the virus. Um, are there particular um, genetic, you know, signals, say the receptor that the virus binds to? People are looking at that but haven't seen that quite yet. Um, you know, it, it may not be that we can find it. In fact, some people think that there's an element of randomness. Did you get a huge dose right at the beginning? Maybe that just gives you a worse course and all these other little things don't matter. So I think that picture is going to emerge slowly. Hopefully we will um, have some real treatments without having to figure out all the details of the pathogenesis.